the quick selection tool, the magic wand tool, and the object selection tool. That's what we're going to be talking about in this episode. If you do not have your three quick object and magic wand tools, go to the bottom of your toolbar with the three dots, click and hold. The little edit toolbar flyout will appear. Click on that. And any of the tools that you have on the extra tool side of the panel, drag those over into your toolbar panel so that you will have all of your tools together and you don't have to go hunting for them. Once you do that, click the Done button and we can get started. We're going to get started on the Magic Wand tool. Magic Wand tool has been around for many generations in Photoshop. And why is it that people like it? Well, because it seems to magically select what you click on. And that's true because the Magic Wand tool is fantastic for selecting continuous color. And in this case, we've got a white background or a mostly white background. And when I click on my with my Magic Wand tool on the background, it seems to miraculously select the background, know where the selections stop, and other than a few little areas where the shadows are, it's a quick and easy way. But this is primarily for continuous color. Now, if I wanted to remove the background, I would go into my Layers panel, go to my Background layer, click on the lock to unlock the background, and turn it into a layer. Because remember, I can't remove a background unless that layer is actually a layer, not just a locked background. And then once I have that layer, I hit my Delete key. It miraculously deletes everything inside the selection. And I am left with a few little areas of shadow and reflection from the strawberries. But the Magic Wand tool isn't great for going in and selecting something that's non-continuous color. Once you start getting other shades of color, it doesn't work as well. But most people just take the Magic Wand out of the package. It's magic. They hit their document with it. It seems to do pretty much what they think it's supposed to do. And then they're done with it. So I'm going to show you some ins and outs of the Magic Wand tool that are actually going to be a whole lot more helpful. First of all, if I use the Magic Wand tool on something other than continuous color, and continuous color is pretty much what appears to the eye to be flat color, I'm going to use it on the strawberries. Now the strawberries are red. They're mostly red. But let's zoom in here and let's actually see that they're not mostly red. Okay, there's a lot of other colors in there, browns and golds and greens and pinks and all these other colors. So while our eye averages all those colors together to make them appear to us to be red, when we use the magic wand tool, what's happening is this. If I take the magic wand tool and I click, it seems that I get a different type of selection every time I go in and I click with a magic wand tool. Why is that? The reason why is because when you are clicking with the Magic Wand tool, you are clicking on a specific pixel. Okay? And when you click on that specific pixel, and you may not even be consciously saying, okay, I want that kind of more yellowy pixel. Once you do, the Magic Wand tool then says, I want all those pixels that are like that one that you clicked on. Okay? So how do we edit these or change these features? Well, very easily because up in the options bar, the sample size is set to point sample. The point sample means that when you click on a specific point or a specific pixel, it is using that as a reference, but that's not how our eyes see things. So what we have is we have the ability to go in and do what our eyes do, average the color together. <clears throat> so when I'm using the magic wand tool, I'm gonna set a higher average. So basically, like an 11 by 11 pixel average. And what is that? Well, 11 by 11 pixels, it basically takes something about this size here and it actually averages all the color together. Well, let's zoom out here and see what that actually looks like to the naked eye, okay? That's like 121 pixels. And what this would do is it averages all those together like our eyes do. And then it says, okay, based on this average color, now let's go ahead and choose all of our other colors. So I'm going to go back to my magic wand tool and now I'm going to click. And you'll notice that it does a lot nicer selection here because it's selecting a whole lot more average red. All right. 
Now, it didn't catch everything. And the reason why is because we've set our 11 by 11 average here in the options bar. But now we have to go in and we have to set our tolerance. Our tolerance goes from 0 to 255. And you probably noticed that I didn't even put a number in there. I did what Photoshop has, which is called a little finger scrubby. Hover over the word tolerance or any other uh, area that has a field that you can change the value in and just scrub back and forth on that name. Now, 255, 0 to 255 is basically the range of color. And if you ever go in and adjust RGB, red, green, or blue, you'll notice that the range goes from 0 to 255. So that's why the tolerance also goes from 0 to 255. I'm going to set the tolerance at 0. And I'm going to go back in and I'm going to select my strawberry. When I select my strawberry with my average here, that average says when you average all those pixels together, the tolerance of zero means I don't want any other pixels that are outside my average. In fact, I'm going to set my sample size back down to point sample and I'm going to click. And I get that little range of color right there. Because a tolerance of zero says I have zero tolerance for any other pixels that are not exactly like mine. Okay? So when I set my average here, it starts to blend the colors together. But even then, it says, okay, with that average, keep the tolerance very low. So obviously, there's lots of different shades and tones going in here. So I'm going to up the tolerance a bit, say to around 25. And I'm going to click again on here. And you'll notice this does a lot better job. So people then draw the conclusion, they're like, oh, I need to keep setting the tolerance up. Well, no, you don't. Because you'll notice once you keep setting the tolerance up, you're also going to be getting things that you don't want, like these areas here. Okay, let's try this on the green. I'm going to click on the green and that seems to do a pretty good job. Now, why is it only picking up the green that I'm touching? Why isn't it picking up the green over here? I notice when I click on this strawberry, it does both strawberries. And the reason why is because they're touching or they're contiguous. And here in the options bar, we have the contiguous button, meaning anything that's touching will be selected based on our sample size and the tolerance that we have set. If contiguous is off and I click on the strawberries, you'll notice that all of the strawberries are now selected. If I click on the green, it will select all of the green because contiguous is not selected. This comes in handy. It also can be really annoying. So if I don't want non-pixing, non-touching pixels to be selected, check the contiguous. That way, whatever I check will remain inside my sample size and remain inside my tolerance. Now, this is not the best way to go ahead and select color because the Magic Wand tool really is good for more flat color, more continuous color than it is for varied color here. But I could go in and I could set a fairly low tolerance to my magic wand with a decent sampling size. And I could click on a set of green here. And this, like the other tools, I can hold down my shift key to add to my selection. Instead of starting over here and then clicking back here and losing my original selection, if I hold down my shift key, I can shift click and then I can pick and choose what things I would like to add to my selection. Now again, the magic wand tool is best for continuous color, so now you can see it's starting to select other things. This isn't the best way to select these strawberries. But I want to show you how this works because a lot of people don't know how the magic wand tool truly works. So we will use this for more continuous color here and you'll see what the results are. But that's the magic wand tool. Now I want to go over to the quick selection tool because the quick selection tool is fantastic. The quick selection tool came out several generations ago and I love it. So with the quick selection tool, how this works is pretty simple. Up in the options bar, we have three different ways to select. We have new selection, we have add to the selection and subtract from the selection. But then we also have the selection size, which is really a brush. Okay. Now, it's not a brush in the sense of a bristle brush, but ever since the days of Photoshop, Photoshop 1.0, which is what I started with, a round cursor that was used to paint or erase was considered a brush. So here you get a round cursor. 
and you can control the size of this cursor up and down so that you can go ahead and treat it kind of like the magic wand tool in terms of tolerance and average. So how do we do this when we don't have our tolerance and our average here in the control bar? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my right bracket to increase the size of my cursor. I'm going to use the left bracket to decrease the size of the cursor. And this, by default, is set to add to selection. And the reason why is because when we use the quick selection tool, we like to add to our selection. So I'm going to show you how this works. Human nature would be to create a very large cursor, a very large brush, and click on the object to do it all in one fell swoop. I wouldn't do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a smaller brush because the smaller brush is going to create a smaller average because it's going to average all the pixels that are inside of my cursor. And the sample size is the size of my cursor, but the actual click portion is that plus. So I'm going to have a smaller cursor and I'm going to click and I'm going to, I could click, click, click all over my strawberry. And miraculously, it seems to be able to find the edge. And what it's doing is that you click in certain areas and then it says, okay, I'm getting your pixel average. I'm getting it. Then it's like, aha, I get it. I've clicked in enough pixels here to understand that all these reds and yellows and greens and browns in here are what you want to have selected. And then it'll seem to jump to the edge. I'm going to do a command D for deselect, and I'm going to try this a different way. I don't need to click, click, click all over. I could just simply click and hold and then drag around and just drag around and it's going to add to my selection. Beautiful. Now, because this has a plus in the middle here, it is automatically in the add mode. I don't need to hold down my shift key, but you can just out of habit. Now I'm going to jump over to this strawberry and I'm going to do the same thing and it miraculously finds the edge of that too. Fantastic. This is awesome. One thing you don't want to do is don't get your cursor close to something you don't want to select. So if you're going to go in here and you're like, oh, I want to select this and you start touching the outside edge, you're going to get all types of crazy selections. Okay. So don't touch things that you don't want to include in here. Keep the cursor away. So I'm going to undo that. Now I can go in, use my left bracket to make a smaller selection around these areas. And you can see it, it's fantastic. It quickly selects everything. I can reduce the size of my cursor down to one pixel. So it will pick up just one pixel's amount of information. Okay, And you can see from this drop down menu up here, we can go to the size of one pixel all the way up to our gig Gantu size of 5,000 pixels, okay? So all the way down to one pixel. Why would I do that? Because maybe I want to select the stems, okay? Keeping the cursor well within the size. Don't have a cursor like this to select the stem because anything inside that cursor is going to be considered selection material and it will begin to grab things that you don't want. Now, because this is the quick selection tool, you have a fair amount of control over what you can do, but you'll notice that it selected part of the shadow. Don't worry about it. Same tool, hold down the option, the Alt key, and you'll notice you get the subtract. Sure, because you can add or subtract with any of your selection tools. So now when I want to subtract, I hold down my option or Alt key, and I just kind of go over that edge that I would like to get rid of. Do you notice how I'm not touching the cursor inside my object here? I'm kind of keeping it at the edge because I don't want to select things that I don't want. I don't want it to take away part of the strawberry, so don't touch part of the strawberry. Just go in and do it this way. Now I noticed this went in and it took a little bit too much. At this point, I could go back here and add, but this could be kind of a futile thing of adding and subtracting. I may go back over just to my lasso tool here and just simply hold down the option key and say, okay, just take this away, okay? I see people going back and forth and back and forth with a quick selection tool. At some point, the automatic feature is no longer automatic. Go in manually and do the tools. And keep in mind, you do not need to use the tool that you started with through your entire selection process. Remember, you have all of your lasso tools, you have all of your quick selection magic wand tools, plus your manual selection tools of your rectangle and your elliptical marquee tool. So don't feel you are stuck with this tool. So 
with these particular tools. So we've gone through the magic wand tool and the quick selection tool. Pretty awesome. I'm going to show you one more tool that they have added here. And this third tool that they've just added to is the object selection tool, which is fantastic. Now the object selection tool came about and it came about just recently. And the object selection tool allows you to automatically find an object. Well, okay. So we're going to do something on a white background and I'm going to select this guy's hair. In fact, you know what? I'm going to jump over to something like this and then we'll go back to the guy's hair. Here's a whole bunch of stock photos and I just want to grab one of these in the background. Now I could use my quick selection tool here. It'd work really good, but you know what? Let's go in and I'm going to use my object selection tool. Up here in the control bar, we have two different modes, the rectangular and the lasso type of selection for the object selection tool. Use whichever one is going to work best. Okay. Now, if I have a blocky object, a rectangular tool would work and the rectangular tool would work just fine here because I have a white background and we'll show you both on a white background and a complex background. So with my tool selected, object tool, object selection tool, I'm going to go and I'm just going to select the rectangular selection tool and I'm going to go around my head of cabbage. Selects it. Look at that. Just that fast. And okay, that was pretty awesome. Could I have done my um, quick selection tool? Yeah. Clicked and dragged all around there. Pretty would have, much would have gotten that. But check this out. I'm going to go to the potato here and I'm going to switch over from my rectangle mode to lasso mode. So we're still in the same object selection tool. I'm just changing the tool representation here. I'd like to go in and just select this potato. So I'm just going to take my lasso tool and go around that potato. <laughs> Look at that. That quick. Okay. I mean, that's pretty awesome. I can use my shift tool to add to a selection. I can use my option or alt tool to subtract from a selection. If I have something that's not working very good. I'm going to take my tomatoes here and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to take my uh, object selection tool, change the mode of that to rectangle, and I'm going to just drag over that and I'll see how it does with the little spindly things. Aha. So it did a pretty good job, but you'll notice where it got to the little spindly items here. It didn't do such a great job. Okay. Here I would probably go back into my quick selection tool and with my cursor here, I would probably go in and I would probably just use my subtract mode by holding down my option or my alt and kind of get rid of those areas that I don't want. Okay. So this would require a little bit more playing around with because we do have some soft highlights that fade into the background, but for the most part, it got us pretty much there. It did a great job here. So how does this work in a real world environment? These are great. These are stock photos shot on a white background. Let's jump over to the salad and we'll show you how good this works. Okay. Now I've got some cherry tomatoes right here and I'd like to isolate those just to change the color. Okay. Let's give this a shot. No longer is this going to be a, you know, perfect scenario. So I'm going to go over to my object selection tool and I'm just going to use my rectangle mode. I'm just going to draw over that cherry tomato. Oh my gosh, look at that. And if I'd like to select this cherry tomato too, I can hold down my shift key and I select that cherry tomato as well. Okay. That's pretty awesome. All right. Now I've tried this with my quick selection tool. It works pretty good as well. Not quite as well, but it's pretty awesome. When you get into something obscure like this, let's try and see what this, I'm going to actually switch over to my lasso mold mode and I'm going to use my lasso hold down the shift key. because I want to add to my selections. I'm going to be a little bit more picky about this because this is a hard to define. <laughs> okay. That's pretty good. I'm liking this a whole lot. Okay. So that is the object selection tool. So hard to select areas. Now it does not do an absolutely perfect job. Okay. It's only as good as your selection is. And then you may still have to go in and tweak. Okay. It isn't the end all and be all, but it certainly is a whole lot better than what it was years ago by just using the manual tools. Now let's jump over to the guy with hair. Before we had the object selection tool, we had the quick selection tool and the magic wand tool. And 
With the quick selection tool, one of the features that they added was the select subject button. Okay. And what it does is it, you can see from the tool highlight here, it creates a selection from the most prominent objects in the image. And this was before we had the object selection tool. Okay. So we have the select subject. So I'm going to just grab my quick selection tool, click the select subject, and we go through and select the subjects or subjects in the picture, just like that. Okay. That's pretty awesome. Well, now that we have the object selection tool, you'll notice that the select subject is still available and the select subject allows you to just click on the button and select the subject without or subjects without you having to go in and define those areas. We're going to come back to this because what I want to talk about is going in selecting his hair. But to better understand how we're going to clean up that edge, we're going to jump over to our ice cream cone and kind of walk through a selection that seems to be simple. But we're going to introduce you to the select and mask function, which then when we go back to the hair, will make a whole lot more sense. So here in this ice cream cone, I would like to remove the background from this stock photo. And I want to put this on a different colored background. So I'd like to select, and the easiest thing to select is the background. Sometimes we just want to get rid of that. I don't want to select the ice cream cone because that's going to be a whole lot more difficult. I'm going to jump in and I'm going to grab my magic wand tool. And the reason why I'm going to use the magic wand tool is because when I go with a magic wand tool, the magic wand tool best selection capabilities are for continu uh, um, continuous color. Now, if I take the magic wand tool and I click on the black background, you can see it selects all of the black and then a lot of the black inside the ice cream cone. And people immediately feel that it's because their tolerance is set too high or too low, so they start messing with us. Remember, you have the contiguous button. If the contiguous button is not checked, it's going to select any color that you clicked on, and it's going to select it throughout the entire document, whether it's touching or not. In this case, my contiguous was off. So it selected the black based on my average and my low tolerance. It selected all the black, but that's not what I want. I want to click the contiguous, click back in the background, and I only want those black pixels that are touching. Now with my selection looking like this, I'd love to remove the black background. So I'm going to go to my layers panel, click on the lock to unlock the background, turn it into a layer, and now I'm ready to delete the background. The background gets deleted. I go under my select menu and deselect using my command D. Looks great. Problem is when I zoom in, it looks like somebody has got a big fat marker around the entire edge. And this is what's called fringing. Because this was a black background, part of that selection didn't go away because we're kind of merged in between the subject, which is the ice cream cone, and the background. So here, when I look at this, I see that we've got like one pixel, and it seems like a lot more, but we've got one little pixel of fringe right there. And if I were to put this on a different color background, it would stand out terribly. In fact, I will do that. I'm going to go to my layers panel here. I'm going to hold down my command key and click the command plus, which puts a layer below my existing layer. I'm going to go to my color picker in my toolbar. I'm going to choose a color and I'm going to fill it using my option or alt delete. And that fills that layer. Multiple ways how to fill layers and we'll get to those too. But when I see that, this doesn't look good at all. Okay. Now I'm not going to go in with my eraser tool and try to erase that. That's going to be futile. So I'm going to back up here several times back to my selection. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to see what this looks like before I actually delete the background. So how do I do that? How do I know what this looks like before I get there? Well, we're going to use our select and mask. So we used our magic wand tool to select the background and we're going to go into select and mask which is a function of the selection mode. And you can see any selection tool that I have active, we have in the options bar a select and mask button. Now, before we go into select and mask, the one thing that you have to know about select and mask is you need a selection around the object that you want to end up with. 
So right now I have my object around the background. Well, the background is not what I want to end up with. I want to end up with the ice cream cone. So I need to go under my select menu and choose the inverse. Okay. This is what I'm going to end up with my ice cream cone. Now I'm going to click on the select and mask button, or I'm going to go into the select menu and choose select and mask both ways, same destination. So now I'm in my select and mask. You'll have your properties panel over on the right hand side here. I'm just going to pull this closer so we can focus on it. Now under the select and mask, you'll notice that we lose everything else from Photoshop because we're kind of in this little mini application within Photoshop. With select and mask, what I want to do under the view mode here is I want to view it on a background that's going to be in contrast to what I originally had. It originally was on a black background. So I want to view it on a white background. Okay, we have onion skin, we've got our selection, we've got overlay on a black background and a white background. I want to view it on an opposite background that I had. You may need to adjust your opacity because your opacity will control how this looks. Keep in mind, this is just a preview. This doesn't change anything with the file. It doesn't put a background in there. It just is preview mode, nothing else. Okay. So now when I preview this, I see that my selection is not perfect, okay? Now we do have a little bit of wiggle room here under the global refinement section to go ahead and shift the edge closer in or further away. The problem is, is that this only does one pixel. So if I shift the edge in, it shifts it in a little bit and it shifts the edge out a little bit further out. So that's further out. And you can see that got a little bit bigger and a little bit smaller. But the problem was here, we didn't get a tight enough selection here to refine the edge. The refine edge is like the last 2% of the cleanup here. So even if I shift the edge closer in and it reduces that a little bit, it still doesn't do it enough. So I need to cancel out of this and we need to fix this problem right now. I'm going to zoom in really close here really close so we can see, okay? And we can see that my selection looks really good. It goes right to the very edge. But these little fringe pixels, these pixels that are on the anti-aliased edge, and the anti-alias edge means that it's trying to create a smoother, more uniform look, okay? These little pixels right here, just these little pixels blending from the lightness of the ice cream cone to the darkness of the background here are what's causing the problem. So what we need to do is we need to take this entire selection and we need to take our selection, go into the select menu. We need to modify this selection. And what I need to do, because the selection is now around the ice cream cone, I want to contract the selection. I want to bring the selection closer into my ice cream cone. Now, this is why we zoom in close, because when the contract selection box comes up, you can't just say, oh, I want to contract it by 57 pixels. No, you have to zoom in and you have to count, which is exactly what we're going to do. Now, the number of pixels that we need to come in, even this pixel right here is slightly too dark. These are the pixels that are making up the creaminess of the ice cream cone. So we're about two pixels away. When we enter into our select and mask mode, we can only go through and expand or contract one pixel. So I'm going to contract this by two pixels, bringing it into right here. So we get into this part of the ice cream cone. Okay. I'm going to click okay. Now it brings it in and it looks like our selection is way too close in. But remember, Anything that isn't the pureness of the color here is going to give us that fringe look. So even pixels like this, while they look really close to it, are still going to darken that edge. So now I've gone in and I've brought my selection in two pixels. And it seems like it's a lot more than that. Okay, but keep in mind that there's two pixels. Yeah, some places are three. Okay, but that's barely a pixel right there that's filled with color. So two pixels works really good. Now with our contraction, now let's go back into our select and mask. Oh my gosh, so much better. Okay. Now, of course, I'm going to view this on my white background because I had it on black, which was the original image. So I want to view it on a contrasting background. This looks good. Now I notice here that there's a little bit of fringe pixel here. So I'm going to go to my shift edge 
and I'm going to pull that edge in. And when I shift the edge in, it will go ahead and move it in. Okay. If I shift the edge, it will go ahead and bump it out. Okay. Now I'm going to set this back to zero here and you'll notice that we have a smoother looking anti-aliased edge. When you shift the edge one way or another, it gets really crispity crunchity. Okay. And the reason why is because we're losing that anti-aliased edge. Now you would think smooth would be the way to do it. Don't do smooth. Smooth in this particular point does not do what it says it does. Smooth actually will melt. So what it does is it gets rid of the jagged edges, but it also gets rid of all the detail and now your ice cream cone will look completely melty and blobby like you took a pair of scissors. Don't use smooth. Okay. Now, what I use is feather. I know smooth sounds exactly what you want it to do. You would use that word smooth here. I never use smooth. What I use is I use feather and feather is going to go in and it's going to give me that anti-aliased edge. You see how it keeps all that nice detail, but then what it does is it feathers out or anti-aliases out the edge where these pixels become translucent at the edge to make it look like it hasn't been cut out and pasted like a sticker. I usually use between 0.2 and 0.4 pixels. Anything more than that is really going to start to blur the edge and make it look fake. Okay. Don't use smooth. Don't use it. Don't touch it. Don't do anything. Okay. So I'm going to do about 0.2 or 0.3 pixels here. Contrast. I'm not going to use contrast. Contrast is going to put me right back at that super, um, alias edge right there. So I don't use contrast and I don't use smooth. I always use feather. Always, always, always. Even if you don't shift the edge on this, I always apply 0.2 or 0.3 pixel of feather. And the reason why is because even if your image is completely sharp and professionally shot and looking beautiful, if I don't feather the edge like two tenths of a pixel here, it looks like when I take out the background and put another background, it looks like somebody cut it out by feathering or anti-aliasing the edge on every single selection that I do, it makes it look like it's part of the photograph. So it's part of my standard routine. When I'm done, I'm going to click OK. Now looking at this selection here, this selection looks totally fake now. It looks like the selection is way too far in and it's not going to look good. The reason why we use the select and mask is the select and mask shows us exactly what it's going to look like. Here, the marching ants cannot show that feathered edge. Okay. So when we go ahead and we delete the background from here, we are not going to be able to see what our select and mask actually showed us. So this selection here is very good. It's not totally accurate. That's why we do our select and mask. I'm going to zoom out using command zero. Now, if I hit delete, of course, I'm going to get my ice cream cone deleted, which is not what I want. So now I need to go back to my select menu, select the inverse, and this is going to give me the background so I can go ahead and delete this. So I'm going to hit delete and I get rid of that background. And now I'm going to deselect, go into the select and choose deselect or command D. Now my background is beautiful. Okay. Let's just throw this on a colored background so we can see what this looks like. So I can go down and put a new layer in my document here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick little fill layer of color. So I'm going to go to my layers panel at the bottom, click on that half moon, and I'm going to fill a layer with solid color. So I'm going to get a solid color layer and pops up with a new layer, automatically opens my color picker. I put a color in here that I'd like to have in the background right there. I click OK. And if I ever want to edit this layer color, I can go back to my color fill layer, double click on that layer thumbnail, and then I can grab a new color from my color picker. Let's drag this layer down behind. And now we have our color behind there. Beautiful. So this is how we can use those particular items with our magic wand tool, quick selection tool, and the object selection tool works out really, really good. All these different ways to select all this different content.